This is a 3D printed toolbox that I made from my Bamboo Labs printer. What makes this toolbox so special is the custom inserts for my nozzles, SD cards, and for my tools. And if I were to close this, shake it around and open everything back up, everything would be in its exact same location, which is why custom design inserts like these are critical to keeping your items safe and organized. And in today's video, I wanna show you how to create your own custom inserts using Fusion 360 and 3D printing. With that said, let's get started. Now in this video, I'm gonna break down the entire process for how you can make your own custom inserts from sketching to designing it to printing the entire piece. So we're gonna cover everything from scratch. But of course, there will be a couple of tools that we will need in order to make this project work. First, we will need is a set of calipers. Mine measures about six inches, which should do the job for what we're gonna do in today's video. Second, we will need a pen and notebook in order to jot down the measurements. Third, we will also need some sort of measuring tape in hand. This is more useful if you decide to make it for larger items or larger projects, but for the sake of this video, I won't be using it. For this video, I'm going to be creating an insert for this nozzle on my Bamboo Labs X1 printer. Now, the reason why I chose this item here is because it's a good starting point, especially with all the different sizing and dimensions of this design. So now that we have everything we need, let's go ahead and get started with this project. Okay guys, so here I am in front of my workbench or my work desk here, and we're gonna go ahead and get started with the sketching process. Now, the reason why we are sketching the product first is because before we move into any sort of CAD software or sketching software in Fusion, whatever software you plan to use, you need to make sure that everything is sketched out with the exact dimensions we need for our project. Just in the same way you wouldn't walk into a building that hasn't been sketched out and mapped with the proper plans and infrastructure in place first, because in the case that it wasn't and if they just started building based off of intuition, then very likely things would go wrong. Same thing here, but at a smaller, not so dangerous level. Point being is that we need to make sure to get the dimensions or the accurate parts for this design or this model here. So in order to do that, we're gonna use our calibers uh, and as well as a uh, pen and notepad here in order to draw everything out. Now for me personally, I like to create a large set model here. So for example, um, instead of drawing it to scale on how it is on the notepad, like making a small version exact, I'd like to sketch out kind of a rough version of it. So for example, if I were to go in here, I would just sketch out kind of like how it looks like. So you can see here, I'm using my calipers as a ruler. So here we are on your screen, you should see the rough sketch of our uh, nozzle here. But the reason for this is because since we're going to be drawing and adding numbers to this, I want to make sure I get these dimensions accurate. And honestly, we don't need to have this reflect the, the image or the actual design. This is just a rough draft or a sketch of what we plan to make with Infusion. So what we're going to do here is start measuring all the sides using our calipers here. So if I were to go ahead and take my calipers and start measuring, let's just say the very top. Now I'm going to switch this over to millimeters since that's what we're going to be working in with Infusion. And you can see the very top one is about 7.48. So since that's 7.48, I'd give it maybe a 7.5. So let's just say 7.5 millimeters for the very top, okay? About this little gap in between this very top to bottom here. So if I were to measure this out, you can see this measures to, let's just say 6.9. So I would say this is a 6.9 millimeters. Now just keep in mind, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going based off what I'm getting within my calipers. We're not aiming for perfection here. We just want a rough draft of our pro product. The next thing we're gonna do is the height of the product. So let's just say we were to measure this. Here we have 1.868. So I would personally round this up to a maybe a one point, or excuse me, 18.9 18, 18 millimeters for the side of that. And also just to make sure, just to double check, I'll also do the other side. So I say the other side is just about the same, give or take 18.5. Maybe it's a little different. It looks like the item is a little bit bent. Can't tell if the camera picks it up, but definitely looks bent to me. But I'm probably gonna leave it at 18.9. What I saw here is probably just bent from here from my perspective, it looks a little bent. I'm not sure if the camera could pick it up. The next thing we need to do is measure from the very top of the, the from the very bottom of the nozzle all the way to the uh, 
this top part here. So if we were to measure this, you can see we go from here to the very top. That is about 23 millimeters. So I'd give this maybe a 23.1. So this is about 23.1 millimeters. I'm also gonna do the same for the length of the nozzle. So that's about seven millimeters. So I'd probably give this, probably give it a 7.2. So we're pretty much almost done. This would also be 7, 23.1, most likely. Now we need to measure the underneath the sides. So let's say this 7.8. And this side here, it's a little bit different. This looks to be about, I would just give this a 12. It actually measures to about 11.77, but it's hard to tell here. Let's, yeah, it's more like a 12. Can't really see it on camera, but it's more like a 12. And to be honest with you guys, you rather would have it a little bit loose than really snug because if it's way too snug, it might get damaged or it may not even fit at all. But if it's too loose, then it will at least fit inside whatever compartment you set it up for. Okay, so now that we have our rough dimensions for the nozzle, we need to go ahead and get the depth of the nozzle itself. So which is the depth, which is from left to right, meaning that not the sizing of the nozzle, but the depth of it, the thickness. So if we were to get that number, this would be, I'm going to overestimate this. I would say maybe 16 millimeters, um, just about, just about 16 millimeters. That's a little over 16 millimeters is a little over, but I rather overestimate than underestimate. So I'm going to create another uh, section here so for depth and there we go we have our pretty much our sketched out design we have everything already sketched out if you also wanted to you can go ahead and label everything so for example if i wanted to label each and every single part so let's just say so let's just say if we wanted to label every single part since i don't actually know every single piece of this nozzle and exactly what it's called i'm gonna just give it a numerical number meaning that for example this top piece is going to be one okay so meaning that if i were to uh, label this out so let's just say one is 7.5 millimeters, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we would add the depth or the thickness. So we pretty much have everything done. Um, one additional thing I want to mention here is I'm not actually going to uh, calculate this kind of triangle shape on the nozzle. I really don't care too much about that. And it doesn't really make sense to model it but if you could if you really wanted to but for the sake of this video i'm not going to do that. now the next thing we could do after we created our sketch is to take this sketch into fusion 360 and begin the modeling process so a really cool and unique way to do this is by taking a photo of this item and importing it with infusion now i'm probably not going to import the sketch as it is where it is right now and the reason is because it's all these numbers are within the place of the sketch and which might look a little bit too dirty. So I'm gonna go ahead and resketch this and come back to you guys once it's resketched. Okay guys, so now that we have our sketch completely mapped out, I also went ahead and added numbers uh, alongside of it. And additionally, since we already have everything documented from start to finish, it makes the process so much easier with Infusion 360. So now we can basically take an image of this photo here drag it with Infusion 360 and get started with the sketching process. Okay, so now that we've created our entire sketch on our notepad, let's go ahead and transfer that design into Fusion 360. So the first thing we're gonna do here is import our photo into Fusion 360. So let's go ahead and do that. I already have my photo loaded up here. I'm gonna open it. Then it's gonna prompt me to add it onto a plane. And from here, I'm just going to select okay so i'm not really worried about the scaling or anything like that we just want to import it within our software here additionally since we measured the item within millimeters i also need to make sure the units are set to millimeters under the document settings so feel free to do so if you haven't done so already so the very first thing we need to do here is create our sketch select the plane and from here i'm gonna just create a line so i'm gonna select this very start point here drag this out and as you can see one of the values that we have um, for number three on the side here is 18.9. So I'm actually going to type in 18.9. Make sure it's at a 90 degree angle. Press OK. After that, finish sketch. Now what I want to do here is resize this canvas to that, uh, that line there. So let's just go ahead and click Edit Canvas. Just scale this up a little bit more. That way it matches. This is just to make it easier for us. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then there we go press enter. Now we kind of have a rough idea of how it's going to fit within our 
um, our sketch. So I'm also going to go ahead and uh, edit the canvas and maybe reduce the opacity to let's just say maybe 220. So now we're going to go ahead and start sketching the design. So I did also forget to sketch out this or get the measurements for this little uh, backwards L shaped piece here. But I went ahead and got the sketch back and wrote it down in my notebook. That way we have everything completely made. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch this out and then we'll come right back after it's been completely sketched out. Okay, so here on your screen, we have the complete and final sketch of our design here. Now, what I want you guys to notice here is I did make a couple of changes. Uh, the main change that I made is that this this bottom piece here originally with my calibers I had gotten a 7.2 for that nozzle part but I went ahead and just put it at a 7.5 that way it matches the very top piece here one problem or one one additional thing I wanted you guys to also know is how many parts and pieces of this nozzle require different measurements. Although it's a very small piece, there are varying lengths and varying sizes of each and every single part. And without those sizings and without having that sketched out first, it would make this process much, much harder. The next thing is to create some sort of insert for this, because for example, now we have our sketch. So, but this doesn't really do anything for us. So let's just say if we wanted to fit this inside of a rectangle, so I'll go ahead and sketch out a small little rectangle here. Now we can go ahead and get started with creating our insert. Now, as an example here, let's go ahead and drag this down. So I'll go ahead and sketch this out to about negative 25 millimeters. So let's just drag this down, negative 25. Here we have a rectangle, bring my sketch back up and drag this down to about 16 millimeters, which is the depth of our uh, nozzle. Now, one additional thing I'd like to do is to kind of create an outline and extrude a little bit extra of what we have here. So for example, if I were to go back to our original sketch, personally, what I like to do is to create a um, out offset of at least, let's just say 0.2. And this is just to combat the possibility of of how 3D printing is, for example. So when you 3D print an object to how it shows in Fusion 360, there may be, for example, some measurements that are slightly off either by a few or by quite a bit. And depending on how your printer is and how finely tuned or calibrated it is, it's basically going to cause like basic issues. Like it may be too snug. Like for example, you might have 12, 12 millimeters with infusion, but once you print it, it may be like 11.9 millimeters in sizing or something like that, right? This is just to do offset the fact that 3D printing is not always accurate. Um, so for that reason, I'm going to go ahead and offset this to maybe about 0.25 millimeters. So just to make it a little bit larger for our nozzle to fit, go ahead, go back into our thing here. Now we offset it by a 0.25 millimeters within our sketch. That way it's 0.25 millimeters um, larger for our uh, nozzle to fit inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this. Now our design is completely mapped out. Everything is completely symmetrical, meaning that even if even though we've offset everything, this should still give us enough leeway to fit in our item within our uh, accessory here. So let's go ahead and add a little bit of detail to this print here. And now that we're done, we're gonna go ahead and send this off to our slicer and let's go ahead and see what the print results are. Okay, so now that we have the print printed, um, it's time to test this out and see if it fits our nozzle. So let's go ahead, move this from the build plate, get our nozzle in hand, fit this in place and fits like a glove. And this is exactly what we're aiming for. We want a custom fit design onto our nozzle here. You can see how perfectly it fits. And if you were to shake this around, it does have just a little bit of wiggle room, but I would say this is just enough. It's very likely that it's not going to fall out on its own unless you turn it over to the other side. But this is the whole concept of creating custom inserts. Not only does it make your product look better, but it definitely gives a lot more character to your products or your accessories. So this is pretty much the final print that we have here. And honestly, this fits like a glove on our nozzle. It fits perfectly. It's pretty much straight up flush with our design here. Hopefully you guys can see it there. It's practically flush. Now, the main thing we could also add with this project is maybe some sort of clip in here. That way, um, if we slide it in, it clicks in place. So if we were to turn this over, it wouldn't fall out. Now that's probably a video for another time. Of course, I just wanted to give you guys kind of a general overview for how to create custom inserts for whatever accessory or gear 
or tool that you might have. But overall, I hope this gives you guys a good learning lesson on how to take your designs from a sketch into a file in Fusion 360 and then turning it into an actual 3D printed product for your own tools and accessories. So that pretty much wraps up today's video. Let me know your guys' thoughts and opinions down below in the comment section. Let me know if there's any questions or concerns that maybe I had missed during this video or maybe something that I should have covered in this video or maybe even in a future video. Feel free to drop a comment down below in the comment section. Additionally, if you like the value that I'm providing from this channel, feel free to like the video and to subscribe to the channel. Additionally, if you guys want to learn Fusion 360 and master these skills so that way you can take your Fusion 360 designs and turn them into 3D printable ones. I do have a masterclass down below in the description. That way, if you're interested, you could join the waitlist. And as soon as the program launches, you are the first to know and you can learn everything from start to finish, from designing to sketching, to turning them into 3D printable projects or products, and even possibly make a business out of creating your own 3D printed design. So with that said, if you guys are interested, there'll be a link down below. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. This is Brandon signing out. Take care.